Hey, good Tuesday morning. I'm meteorologist Pete Malone. It is August 30th. This is your around 10 a.m. update on what's going on out in the tropics as we wind down the month of August and it has been a really quiet month of August out in the tropics. We are taking a look here at the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico just to show you that there's still no tropical threats to the United States with regard to the Gulf Coast. Now there is still a trough of low pressure that's been trying to develop down here in the Northwest Caribbean, but it just doesn't look like it's going to do anything. So great news there as it heads west into the Yucatan. There will be some moisture from this in the Gulf, but it doesn't look like it's going to develop much at all. Out in the deep Atlantic, we are still tracking a couple of features. You can see the two features there. Uh, one is a bit further off towards the west, whereas one is just now coming off the continent of Africa. That one will head out into the Atlantic, and then some guidance pulls it back up into the Atlantic. we got plenty of time to see what it does. But this feature right here, that's known as Invest 91. It's still an unorganized area of showers and storms, but it does have... Uh, signs that it's been trying to organize some. You notice there is a healthy birth of showers and storms around that uh, broad and elongated circulation, but the circulation, it's very uh, defined in there. It's about like that, and we've seen it on satellites. Satellites have been going over this part of the Atlantic and taking samples, and we know that we have at least some cyclonic spin trying to develop with this wave. Uh, the deal with it, though, right now is there is an upper-level low that's sitting to the north of it like this and up around that upper level low your winds are going uh, counterclockwise so that is pushing shear on this thing and it's also allowing some dry air to get up into it so if it does try to organize in the next couple of days it should be a fairly slow process thanks to the dry air and shear now as it moves northwest here as it gets further off towards the west and northwest it moves uh, kind of north of the islands which you see are right here the environment's going to be a lot better. There's not going to be as much wind shear. There's not going to be as much dry air. So we do think it's going to develop eventually into a depression. And then there is guidance that hints that this is going to become uh, more than likely Danielle at some point. That would happen later this week into the weekend. So where is it headed beyond that? Well, our tropical models here, as you can see, are in agreement that whatever this disturbance is, it's going to head northwest. The way it looks right now, it's going to stay north of the islands here. Now, you may get some choppy seas and stuff for Puerto Rico the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, but if the center stays up here, it'll probably be missing most of the islands. Now notice, here's the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. So as it looks like it's heading that direction, that's when it starts to make its turn to the north and east. And a lot of our guidance models, ensemble, spaghetti plots, whatever you want to call them, they do turn this out towards areas like Bermuda by the middle, kind of the beginning middle of next week. So in the next uh, seven to 10 days could be making that turn out towards the Atlantic. So right now, all signs point that this is going to turn out to the Atlantic. That would be great news for the U.S. And while it's showing that, yeah, it's probably going to turn, you know, it's still worth watching, especially near the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and up in maybe to Puerto Rico, and especially Bermuda. Now here's why we, excuse me, why we think it's going to turn. It all has to do with the steering currents. And what's interesting about the steering currents of this system is the influence of its turn is likely going to be heavily dependent on what this does out in the west. What is that? That's a ridge of high pressure. That means there's going to be very hot temperatures out west as we go into Labor Day weekend. But what happens here is whenever you get a ridge, which a ridge, you notice it goes up like this, there's got to be a trough on the other side of that ridge. And the stronger the ridge, probably the more dramatic that trough is going to be. So as that ridge develops, we will see a trough develop out here to the east. And whenever you get a trough developing, this is going to tug on whatever is down here. Now, that trough is too far away right now to feel the influence of that tropical system. So as it makes its way northwest, it's still under that ridge of high pressure, not feeling the influence of that trough. But watch what happens as we go into Monday, Tuesday of next week. That trough digs down and it starts to pull it up into the trough. So there's the trough. There it is coming down. That's why these things curve out to sea. Now, if there was a big ridge of high pressure sitting over this part of the U.S., this thing would be problematic for the United States, but it just doesn't look like it thanks to this ridge of high pressure that has developed out in western U.S. So that ridge could actually save the eastern U.S. from uh, a tropical system, whereas unfortunately it's going to lead to heat and maybe wildfires out to the west. So they're inversely related when you're looking at it across the country. So we'll watch it, but right now I like the trends that I'm seeing with Invest 91. I just want to point out how rare and how unprecedented, oops, I know we're all sick of that word, but uh, how rare it is to go uh, August without a storm. We've gone all month long without a storm. We've actually gone 58 days without 
some type of cyclone, a depression, a storm, a hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. And by the way, we have yet to have a hurricane form in the Atlantic Basin. That usually on average forms in August, mid-August. Uh, we're getting close to that all-time record of days without a system. That's 61 days. That was set back in 1999. We went from June 18th to August 18th without a storm. And it looks like we very well could make a run at that record. We will see. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, that's rare. It's also rare to not have a system in the month of August. It has happened. It's happened two other times since 1950. That's when we really had reliable satellite data. Uh, the last time was in 1997, and that was a below normal year. But 1961 was the time before that, and that was a long time ago, obviously. And um, what's interesting about 1961 is it wasn't a quiet season. While nothing formed in the month of August, it was actually a very upper or what we call hyperactive season. When you look at the 1961 season, it went all of August without anything happening. We hit September and October and things exploded. There was five major hurricanes and two of those were a category five. That's pretty significant, uh, especially back in the 1960s there. So just because you have these big lulls doesn't necessarily mean you can't have a hyperactive year. Another good example of a quiet stretch of weather and then it blew up. 1999, when we went 61 days without a storm from June through August, we ended up having five category fours. And once again, a lot of that did form once we got into the later August and through September and October. So just because you have these lulls doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have a quiet September or quiet October. Uh, and another part of this is the 1999 or 1997 season when we had a long stretch of no storms. That was um, an El Nino year, and that's somewhat to be expected in those seasons. Now, the 1961 year uh, was kind of a neutral phase or more of a La Nina. So uh, something we still need to follow closely the rest of this hurricane season. Of course, it's impossible to say uh, if we do see more storms, bigger storms form later in this season, where do they go? Maybe they all stay out in the Atlantic, but... It's a reminder that just because you have these long lulls, while it has been rare the, in recent years, it has happened before. It hadn't happened frequently, but it has happened. And it's just a reminder that you really are in hurricane season until sometimes the end of October. So we still have you know, a couple more months to really watch things. Right now things are looking okay, but that's not to say things won't flip towards some point of September or October. But for now, things are looking pretty good out there in the tropics, at least with regard to the United States. That's going to do it for our Tuesday morning tropical update. As we wind down the month of August, things are looking okay, but it does look like our next tropical depression or even tropical storm Danielle could be forming by the end of this week. Thank you so much for joining me.